Well, folks, it's finally happened. After three years of development, after a double-headed crowdfunding campaign that split this game's release in half, and after some internet drama that turned Double Fine into a punching bag in some circles, the first big video game crowdfunding project is finally complete. Backers and current customers get Act 2 of Broken Age for free, as do the rest of us for the same price the first half of the game has always been sold at. After all that work and drama, Kickstarter has finally made a... another video game you can just throw on the pile. Broken Age is an old-school point-and-click adventure game brought to you by the creative lead behind Scum Engine classics, such as Full Throttle, the Monkey Island series, and Grim Fandango. It banks so hard on nostalgia for those old games that there's even an instant retro mode button that applies a pixelation dithering filter right there on the spot, which isn't how pixel art is supposed to look at all. What's weirder is how, despite the retro filter button and everything else, I didn't exactly feel like the target demographic here. Broken Age is as nostalgic a Kickstarter as any other, but the final product feels like something geared towards a much, much younger audience than the people who would actually feel that nostalgia. The story follows two teenagers, a baker girl named Vela and a space boy named Shay, who's lived his entire life on a crib ship being treated like a spoiled toddler. No irony was lost when watching a cool-looking wolfman tell him what a brave hero he was for playing video games. How clever. The story goes in much darker directions through Vela's campaign, especially after the midpoint, but even then, the writing for both characters sticks to this explanatory monotone that is borderline patronizing. They narrate everything, laying out their inner thoughts and desires so easily that nothing is left to the imagination. Our heroes are so lacking in nuance that there's no way the writing can hide what threadbare characters they actually are. Subtlety is what the writing in Broken Age generally lacks, and that's one of the reasons why I think this game was made for kids. But there are a couple factors that don't seem readily appealing to a kid-friendly audience. One of them is how creepy everyone's mouth looks. Or maybe that's just me. At its best moments, when things are running along smoothly, Broken Age is cute and funny. I found myself giggling at the occasional double entendres and sighing at the plushy, ready adorableness of almost everything that wasn't bearing any teeth. I found the process of solving puzzles to its peaceful music and affable art soothing, even with their humorously destructive solutions. But it's all cute and funny until you get stuck. Until you run out of logical, immediate solutions with clear cues and visible hints. Until the game expects you to click on something you can't see, or deliberately attempt to kill your character on the way to a puzzle solution. At which point, it becomes a verbally annoying, counterintuitive, and almost hostile grind. Oh boy. The old adventure game abuse of brute-forcing your way to a solution by combining everything with everything else is just as necessary here as ever. And it's not helped by how quick your characters are to repeat their same hopeless lines of rejection over and over again. It's all cute and funny until you have a bitter script of denials burned into your memory. I don't think I can tap that. I don't think I can tap that. I don't want to fork that. I don't want to fork that. It's all cute and funny until you're sadly reminded of what classic adventure games were never good at. Adventure game puzzles were always a joke, and the sheer absurdity of their logic was the punchline. But expecting the player to think laterally enough to piece together these surreal puzzles was their Achilles heel. And if Broken Age is intended as a way for older adventure fans to show their kids what that magic was like, then it's gonna come off more as a rude awakening of what customers never liked about adventure games in the first place. Just two years after the swan song of Grim Fandango both succeeded and failed for the same reasons Broken Age might, Eric Wolpaw wrote that it wasn't the skyrocketing appeal of fast-paced Quake clones that killed off adventure games. Rather, adventure games killed themselves. Because of puzzles. Disclaimer, I know that some fans out there actually do play these games for the puzzles, and I will never know what that feels like. But even while shoving away blocked memories of Act 3, I was looking forward to Broken Age, because Grim Fandango is one of my favorite games ever. Except for puzzles. But it seems that the days of exploring a world as vibrant, expansive, and lively as the nighttime city streets of Rubicava may never ever happen again. With the exception of a handful of one-off areas you never return to, there are only two sizable hub areas in Broken Age, and you spend both halves of the game backtracking through each one. 
Whereas older Schaefer games had screen after screen chock full of unique characters and voices and clickable objects that explored your character's own senses of humor, Broken Age has maybe three handfuls of unique characters and voices. And there's also a distinct lack of clickable interactive stuff. There's no look at button. So instead of shedding some light on our character's sense of humor, they just tell you what stuff is. Because this game was made for babies. The lack of content comes as a shock after playing something like Pillars of Eternity, which had at least a hundred beautiful, unique backgrounds for a 70 hour game that managed to impress me by accomplishing a decently budgeted 90s game production value on a skimpy, crowdfunded budget nowadays. Whereas that game stayed true to its nostalgic roots by making an incrementally more polished Baldur's Gate as if nothing had ever changed, Broken Age seems to have sacrificed a lot in the name of spit-polishing everything to a mirror shine except for its actual game design, and the sheer amount of places the player goes and the things they do. You can just look at the voice credits to see how Schaefer's ambitions might have gotten ahead of the teams. Damn, 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 damn! And Lisa Hamilton. There's this star-studded cast of voices you may not even know are there, because with writing this expository, there's barely any room for them to act. Elijah Wood sounds medicated, Will Wheaton sounds half asleep, and Jack Black sounds like John DiMaggio. It's ridiculous! And I have to wonder if the lack of game content has something to do with the abundance of misused star power and their lack of unique voice lines. There's an abundance of elaborate, poorly hinted puzzle solutions that somehow coexist with a lack of interactive, observable items. Solving them has you backtracking back and forth across multiple loading screens as you work your way through a process of elimination over tens of minutes, sometimes requiring you to repeat failed attempts over and over again, and all that leads up to an anticlimactic, asinine plot that hints at far too much of a world than its tiny, limited scope could ever hope to explore. It just left me wondering, who Broken Age is meant to impress? What market is this game even for? Who thought this knot puzzle was a good idea and just what's the point of anything anymore? Why do we exist? Do we even exist? I don't want to fork that. I don't want to fork that. I don't want to fork that. I don't want to fork that.